for me photography was more than just a means of making a living for me it was an expression a medium which i would want to explore things with and also be able to express with having spent 12 years in advertising i also realized when i looked back that i was very much a city delhi bombay kind of indian you know very urban indian and having traveled a bit earlier i did realize that you know india is the kind of country where there are at least two indias if not more photography became my way of exploring this other country if you're sitting in delhi you don't really understand what a you know a camel mela in pushkar is about you know what what it means to be in a place with it you know 2000 camels or if you've not been to banaras in shivratri you don't know what it means to be on the ghats amongst thousands of people uh, you know if you've not been to the kum and you've not actually woken up at 4 o'clock in the morning and you know felt that vibe of millions of people who had the same reason for being there uh, you know so that's that's what really fascinated me that's what really uh, became my reason for photography well i was also very clear that i have to make a living and so it's my commercial photography is continued and it's continued right through even till today i do advertising work i do editorial i do architecture i work for hotels and i work for fancy hotels i shoot fancy food and i love it i i love the fact that i can you know actually do such contrasting things uh, with photography and i feel blessed for it the incredible india campaign was something which was devised by an agency called trikaya which uh, was working for the ministry of tourism when the ministry of tourism had assigned them the, the campaign for doing uh, this particular one uh, which was supposed to commemorate the 350th anniversary of the taj and i was very clear that i didn't want to shoot the taj as this beautiful white pristine you know marvel of architecture so what we devised was that let's bring in india and of course it's not that you know on the banks of the river they you know whether it's the rickshaws or whether it's the kids flying kites or whether it's you know the women drying sarees those are all things which i have from my experience and my memory of india which you know i see happening all the time but when you're doing a commercial assignment you do it in a certain specified period of time you know because you go for a week or three days or five days or whatever it is and you're supposed to deliver those five pictures you can't just hang around waiting for women to come and dry sarees and then you know wait for three more days for the kids to start flying kites so so therefore from one's experiences uh, of what one has seen of indian life we arranged to bring all that and set it up and shoot it with the taj as the backdrop what all we can do is something which came from you know my experiences of you know how india lives and what happens on the streets and on the ghats and you know all that well the interesting thing is that bazaar and all living faith were not formalized they were not shot as projects i was just traveling and using my camera camera as a way of exploration i was just using it to familiarize myself with with this other country which belonged to me but which seemed that i didn't belong to uh i was only reacting to and working with what i saw as a person as an indian and an indian who felt that he was an alien in his own in his own land i went back to my 10 11 years with the travel photography looked at that then found that there were these two very strong streams one to do with the bazaar and one to do with faith and that again is not because i consciously thought so but i think i just was responding to the individual uh, for instance the bazaar is not about the vast markets or the mela even within them it's always that one person who is trying to find dignity to make their own living is that one person who set up a stall at the corner of a bazaar and how that person is using color in his merchandise to be able to attract customers strangely enough for a person who's done a book on faith i am totally you know non religious i don't believe in any particular religion i'm not a practicing hindu but i'm a born uh, hindu but i'm very clear that you know there's a difference between faith and religion uh, faith is something which an individual has and you know which makes a person think of something larger than yourself and and respect that whatever form or name that person wants to give it it's their business religion as far as i'm concerned is the organizing of that faith for the benefit of the organizer so i wanted to make that very clear distinction between faith and religion 
and I was doing that instinctively. It wasn't like I was, you know, I went out searching for those moments or whatever. But in, in retrospect, when I was looking at the picture, I realized that that's that's what I am linking with. That's what you know, my empathy is for, is for the individual, is for those solitary moments, is for that person looking for dignity in the larger, madder, chaotic, you know, India. <laughs> the series on dignity obviously came from within the bazaar because that's actually where it's about. I do look out for people who I find, who I feel uh, in India are not given enough respect uh, for what they're doing. But I think if you're not stealing, if you're not begging on the street and you've had the guts and you've had the dignity to say, I will work for a living no matter what. And even if it seems to be below someone's you know, station or whatever it is, uh, I will still do it. Especially since in India, it seems that, you know, begging, for instance, can be a very easy option. Uh, and not just a very easy option, it's supposed to be a profitable option. Uh, so a person who is going through hard times, they say, no, I'm not going to do that, but I'm going to make a living. I feel one needs to recognize that and give it its due honor. Double Take was an idea which I had. And when I spoke to the editor of First City magazine, uh, it was actually conceived as a six uh, six part uh, thing which we do for six months, you know, it meant as a uh, monthly column. I was taking the picture of these six boys and suddenly one of the boys just, you know, pulled apart his shirt and said, maybe Shah Rukh Khan. And he was taking off from the fact Shah Rukh Khan is a, is a very well known Indian uh, film star. And in that time, a, a, a film of his had come in which he had developed six packs, especially for that picture. And this scrawny little kid, you know, pulled his shirt around, you know, apart just at the moment when I shot that picture to say that he's also Shah Rukh Khan. And what he was showing me, of course, was 12 ribs, you know, <laughs> rather than a six pack. But so it's just like I said, it's just not just about political commentary. It's not just about social commentary. It's not just about making, you know, a point about how bad things are. It's just about the, to me, irony can also be comedy, you know, it's, it's, uh, and so that's, that's what Double Take was about. I, I mean, India is the kind of country where I could actually do it for the rest of my life. I probably still do. I still do shoot those pictures. It's not like I'm not doing that. But I didn't want to, you know, keep doing it as a conscious thing. And for about six, eight months, I didn't do a column. And then, and then because I was still shooting, and I spoke to Bharat uh, again, and I said, look, I, what I want to do is urban trivia. There are too many things in India which we don't comment about. Uh, we see it all the time, but we become blind to it. <laughs> I just feel that in India, society has been brought up especially since we became independent, uh, since we are a socialist-minded government. And it insisted that they will do it all, you know, as far as the civic and the uh, social is concerned. I think most Indians have been brought up to feel that they don't need to do anything or they can't do anything about the roads, you know, about the potholes, about the water situation, about the electricity situation, about garbage on the street. I'm not making excuses for the fact that people are not being proactive in terms of doing these things. But I do look for a reason why they don't, all right? Uh, there's also, to my mind, a kind of a religious background to this. Uh, to my mind, Hinduism is a very personal, very individual kind of religion. It's, it's an individual transaction with the God I believe in. So, so that's these two different kind of things which are happening. There's also the helplessness of the average Indian today because it takes so much time and energy to just make a living, to just, you know, go from morning to evening to look after the fact that there's no water at home, you know, the fact that there's power cuts, the fact that, you know, what do I do about my child's education, etc., etc. That to be public minded and to get into protest is almost impossible for most people. Uh, so that's where India is about and that's where, for instance, that phrase, you know, we are like that only comes from. It's, 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 it's sarcastic and it's an excuse. It's, it's the Indian way of saying, so what if things are like that, that's the way we are. Like it or lump it. 
so there is a certain anger, there is a certain sarcasm, but there is also an apology, all kind of bundled into that one phrase. The flip side of that really is that we, we got blinded to a lot of things. We've turned that into trivial things. Uh, the entire process of urbanization, for instance, in India, that actually has been really horrible because one, I think this happened really fast. Two, since we've, we've not been very public-minded people. Three, because we have had governments which do not take on the responsibility which they say they will and then you know are not held accountable for that. So it's just really a kind of an amalgamation of all these reasons why we find especially the urban areas in India uh, in, in such a mess. And there's no what comes first. Did the photograph come first or did the feeling come first? At times it's the feeling and I go and look for a photograph. Uh, for instance, there's a photograph of these two girls with the back to the camera. I shot that about a year ago. Uh, and it's only when this entire thing of the gang rape uh, happened in Delhi that I felt that the body language of these girls, the barbed wire there, it's, it's a picture which fits into my feeling for what I have two daughters, you know, it's, it's, it's something which has really affected me very deeply. So I realized that there were pictures I was doing at that particular time, which uh, there was a sense of irony, there was a sense of conflict, there was a sense of contrast. And that probably is from the fact that I do find India in a way very infuriating and very lovable simultaneously <laughs> it's, it's a schizophrenic country and i think probably you know makes for schizophrenic citizens like me these columns in a way have disciplined me into looking at things in a structured manner and more importantly on a regular basis which i do actually find for a lazy person like me works very well <laughs>